Hi, just a small uh, solar update video here after the uh, big switchboard upgrade. I had to fiddle around with the uh, current clamps quite a bit to get it to, uh, you know, get the whole system back operational again because I've got like nine current clamps or something. It's just uh, absolutely crazy and how they all interact and the two solar um, different separate solar systems and everything. It gets messy. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd give you a little update here. And uh, this is today. This is uh, live here right now. And you can see, um, and also after I've got my new uh, heat recovery and ventilation system uh, installed as well. So that takes, I still haven't measured its actual uh, power consumption. But uh, uh, you can see here, this is the residual power consumption while we were sleeping last night. And uh, something interesting happened. You can see here why it changes from this brownish to this blue because when it overlays it, the yellow is the uh, um, solar production. And yes, it is generating solar at night because my solar analytics system here doesn't know the difference between the actual solar panels receiving sunlight and the inverter putting that energy out there or the battery actually doing it during the night. So um, yeah, it's so it shows up as solar production here, which is exactly what you expect. It's a little bit confusing until you realize that, yeah, your battery is just doing essentially what your the, the sun's doing. Um, it's <laughs> producing the energy in exactly uh, the same, well, into your house and all the grid in exactly the same way. So look, the um, battery actually hit uh, the 20% cutoff limit at 2 a.m. in the morning here and wah, and then you can see that interestingly you remember how I did that video on that 70 watts I think it was 69 watts residual uh, power consumption in my uh, new DI in inverter wah, there it is <laughs> there it is actually measured so um, yeah 70 watts here um, and which negative 70 watts so it's actually taking then my DI inverter is taking 70 watts from the grid when that battery actually switches off. So there you go. Otherwise, it's getting the 70 watts um, from, well, it, it, essentially the battery is doing that. But yeah, once once the it determines that it's actually turned off, yeah, 70 watts uh, right there. So if I turn consumed on there, it just, yeah, overlays that. So, and this little bit, you know, so you can see these little, if you want to know these little uh, ridges, here, um, that's just, we've got three fridges, uh, freezery things. So yeah, they're all cycling off at different times. And this sort of peak here is where, I don't know, the defrost mode came on or something happened, you know, like, or well, they all switched on at once and sort of, you know, it takes a little bit uh, more. So, um, oh, no, actually, I think one of the kids might've got up. So there might've been some, something happened there anyway doesn't matter. So let's go back a day, uh, shall we? And uh, we can see here that uh, here's another typical day here. We didn't do much, but we did charge the EV. So you can see that the EV is the uh, pink one there. And you can see that the uh, consumed follows uh, with the Zappy EV uh, charger here. You can see that it basically the EV charger, we didn't have enough sun here. The sun died off. So the Zappy charger we had on Eco Plus mode um, and it went well. I can't, I don't have enough energy to charge the ex excess energy to charge the EV. So it doesn't until oh, the sun came out again and then decided to track it. So the EV tries to take as much as it can and the residual in there you can see that there's a higher residual in there a higher res yeah residuals the right word higher residual in there or excess in there than there is here so that means the house was drawing more here as a uh, total so there was less available for the uh, EV uh, to actually pick that up so that's interesting is it not and if we go back and let's just go back another day um, this is rather interesting because this one shows you can see here how the produced power up oh, how the I hate that I can't manually scale this thing ah, bloody solar analytics um, you can see that the consumed here is actually higher than the produced here so this is a problem I had why I will never get to a zero electricity bill 
is because it takes, when uh, loads are switching off and on, the solar inverters take time. They, they have a PO, you know, they have a loop in there, they have a control loop in there that cannot react fast enough to like peak load changes and stuff like that. But I see that on my electricity bill where I'm never going to get zero. I'll pop that up now. So here's my AGL uh, smart meter thing, which I get daily data now. And you can see that the blue ones, the positive, are the excess um, that I'm taking, well, the extra I'm taking from the grid. And you can see there is no day, there is no day when I'm not drawing something from the grid. Even a tiny little, like 1.5 kilowatt hours, something like that, 0.97 kilowatt hours, so 970 uh, watt hours from the the grid over that day, even when I export an absolute ton, why am I still using energy? That's because of the control loop inside the solar inverter, not just the DI, but also the um, end phase as well. So uh, yeah, it just can't react to large power transitions. You know, you switch an oven on or something like that. It can't deliver five kilowatts instantly in milliseconds. It, it doesn't work like that. The control loops don't work like that. So that has that power has to be provided by the grid. And given that the smart meter is sampling really fast, like every second or maybe even multiple times a second, I don't know if you know, for, for that EDMI one, uh, leave it down below. But uh, yeah, it samples much quicker <laughs> than the uh, solar inverters can actually react. So that's why unless I go completely off grid, <laughs> then I'm not going to uh, get a zero, well, I might get a zero electricity bill because I could export more than I import in terms of cost, um, even though I'm getting fed like seven cents for exporting and importing is like 31 cents or something. Um, so yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm still not gonna get a day that will have zero taken from the grid. It's just not possible due to the, um, response rate of the solar inverter. So yeah, that's interesting, huh? Anyway, um, so yes, uh, maybe you might see that in here, but I don't think the solar analytics uh, sample's fast enough. There you go. There's just some uh, new data from um, the newly installed, well, newly reinstalled uh, system after the uh, switchboard upgrade and it's working well and I can see the 70. Anyway, that's all I wanted to share. Catch you next time.